So we are going to go ahead and get started. My name is Elizabeth Aloni. I'm with Schneps Media. Schneps Media is the largest local media company in the New York metro area. We publish over 80 newspapers, magazines, and websites throughout Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, the Bronx, Staten Island, Westchester, Long Island, the East End, Philadelphia, and even Palm Beach with Dan's Papers Palm Beach. So today we are thrilled to be able to bring a very important webinar, Secrets to Healthier and Younger Looking Skin, because look, everybody wants to have wonderful skin. And I am thrilled to be able to introduce you to our expert panelists. So we have Sharon Grasso is a licensed esthetician, beauty expert, aesthetic consultant, and patient advocate since 1995. She holds licenses in aesthetics, medical micropigmentation, permanent makers, makeup, procedures, and instruction. She's had the opportunity to observe many surgical procedures, both invasive and non-invasive, with many board-certified surgeons. She holds certifications in many light therapy and laser modalities. As a beauty advisor and practitioner, it has been her life's work to help to advocate and direct clients to the right physicians, technicians, and for the right procedures for them. Sharon founded Permanent Touch Cosmetics over 25 years ago and has been working very closely with Cyton Aesthetic Laser Devices since 2005. Her services not only make your skin look younger and healthier, but it's about helping your skin to actually behave younger as well. She achieves this with the gold standard combination using Cyton broad brand light technology, as well as Skin Tight, which is a non-ablative infrared light energy wavelength that helps to tone and tighten skin lax lax laxity. And our latest and her latest and most advanced procedure, Moxie Micro Laser Peel. Wow, with BBL Hero. Hero stands for high energy rapid output. Wow. She's going to tell us a lot about it, but it sounds amazing. Welcome, Sharon. Good morning, Elizabeth, and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get right into it. I'm dying to hear. So let's talk about summer. What is trending for summer 2022 in the beauty world? So in the beauty world, what we're seeing, um, think people are going into a much more natural approach toward aesthetics. So um, in the world of permanent makeup, which is something that I you know, have a passion for and have been doing since 1995, um, for a while, microblading was a big thing and these big, thick, heavy brows, that's trending. We're really trending away from that. We're trending into a more, what we call a nanobladed brow, which is a very um, natural, uh, aesthetically pleasing, not trendy brow. We are seeing um, a very natural lip tinting with uh, micropigmentation lip blushing. We are seeing very natural skin care. Um, as you mentioned, Cyton, um, I work very closely with the company and we're doing things that naturally induce collagen. So we're seeing less of those fluffy pillow facey um, injectables and more skincare, more sunscreen. I think the trends are just going in a more natural direction. I like that. That's exciting because you can look young and beautiful and natural as opposed to looking done. So well, that's, the goal. that's the goal. I think everyone had um, a long time to really reflect and take a good look in the mirror as well as a good look at themselves on Zoom. What I found, um, a little bit of a segue, what we found in aesthetics, because I've spoken with my colleagues as well, during the pandemic, we all went toward Zoom meetings as we're on now. So that gave us the ability to you know, at work as well, you know, that we needed to. Um, but we saw ourselves in a different way than we do in the mirror. So when we're in a Zoom meeting as we are now, we not only see ourselves um, just kind of, you know, still and looking in the mirror, we see ourselves animating. We see ourselves speaking. We see the way the eyebrow goes up. Oh, maybe I want Botox there. We see that when we smile, maybe there's more of a nasal labial fold here. We notice things we had not in the past, right? So I think that really made a big difference um, you know, in the world of aesthetic. Now that people are coming out, hopefully, you know, things are going in the right direction and we're taking off the masks. And so people really are trending toward um, treating the things that everyone else can see as well, because now we know how we look when we animate. That's a great point. So what are you seeing on the plastic surgery side as, is it the same type of trend? So what I'm seeing a lot of, again, is more natural. I'm seeing a lot of my clients that, um, you know, connect with me and ask my opinion or talk about procedures that I've seen or had myself, 
they're trending towards smaller breast implants. They're trending toward uh, maybe a breast lift as opposed to a big implant. Of course, it's very, very much individual and depending on the person's lifestyle and, you know, needs. Um, but I'm seeing more, again, you know, smaller breast implants, um, more defined and pretty lip fillers as opposed to big is, um, I think we're steering away from big, more extra and going more toward a natural, you know, a natural look. I think we're seeing, um, a lot of these mini facelifts along with some really good laser skin care. So the skin glows, um, you know, and I don't want to get into jump ahead to another subject, but it really is all skin. Um, it's our largest organ. So I think with any procedure across the board, it really does come down to the skin needs to match the aesthetic we're looking for. If that makes well, sense. You, you actually give me a great segue because I'm so interested. I'm sure everyone is like, what is the latest in skincare? We all want our skin to look beautiful and glowing. So what's the latest? So the latest for us, um, and we've been very consistently working with Cyton technology, as you mentioned, for many years, since 2005. Um, Cyton's newest technology, I'm a luminary for the company and work very closely with them. Um, and I've invested in not one, but three of these um, laser devices. What we're seeing is something called BBL Hero, which as you mentioned, broadband light, which in fact is not a laser. It's um, a, a visible light source, broadband light in the family of intense pulse light, but in my, my personal feeling way better, um, Hero, high energy rapid output. So what's different about that? What's new? What's new is it is the first ever in motion um, pulsed light device. That gives us the ability to pulse four pulses per second, which means, um, in fact, we can cover an entire decollete in a minute and a half. We can do um, a photo facial on an entire face and neck, you know, in three minutes. Um, arms, legs, it is pulsing four pulses per second. The intensity is, it is you know, four times with three times the cooling. So we're protecting the epidermis from a burn. Mm -hmm. We are completely steering away from the concern for those who know they know and for those that don't just to kind of the background in the world of IPL or intense pulse light devices we were seeing what they call like a checkerboard effect so when you want to do a large body part the wand pulse 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 right if you left even a little bit of the space which when people aren't properly trained, which is another segue that we're not going to you know, <laughs> touch on for now, um, you need to do a, a specific overlap to avoid a space in between the removal of the chromophore or hyperpigmentation, right? Mm -hmm. um, hero, we slide and we're pulsing so quickly, we don't run the risk of ever missing a spot. Mm -hmm. So that's right. Um, and the other wonderful thing that we find with broadband light, it's been a really big deal for us is something they that you can actually Google. It is the Forever Young um, BBL Stanford study, which spoke about a study conducted at Stanford University that showed us that the genetics inside the cells not only appear nine to 10 years younger, but behave younger. Um, so that means the collagen reproduction or collagenesis is dramatically improved. And Hero is giving us the ability to treat not just a face or neck, but Decollete, arms, legs, um, which is something that over the years, people paid a lot of attention to their face and neck, those that did, did. Um, and then in photographs or in the real world, they would look at, you know, or someone would say, well, your chest or the rest of you looks different than your face. No one wants that dead giveaway. We want it to be natural, right? Mm -hmm. So gave us the ability to do that um, with wonder wonderful efficiency. And um, along with BBL Hero, they launched Cyton, la uh, launched something called Moxie Micro Laser Peel. So we were the first practice in the New York tri-state area to um, get this, the Ebdul system, which is BBL Hero with Moxie. And um, so we were able to really try it and use it and watch these incredible results. So Moxie is a micro laser peel. And what that is, is it creates microscopic channels in the skin, almost like microneedling, um, only it, it, it stops at the dermal boundary. So it never compromises the integrity of the dermis, meaning we don't open up the skin. There is no bleeding. There is no bruising. Um, a client will get a little red for a day or so and then have what they call mens, microscopic epidermal necrotic debris. Little tiny um, deposits of collagen or little scabs. Your body heals those tiny microchannels 
pushes out the scab and re replaces it with a brand new deposit of collagen so or skin. So what we're saying is you're depositing collagen in your bank of collagen that you can draw on for the rest of your life. So this gives us um, anti-aging. This gives us um, literally turning back the clock. It gives us the ability to treat chromophore hyperpigmentation melasma, which is a very big concern to many, um, effectively year round on all skin types. So that has been the latest and greatest um, for us and super busy with the people love it. We're consistently getting these, these great results. So in, in the world of skincare, I think that's it. You know, it's exciting because it sounds like it's really kind of in line with that whole natural feeling. It's like, if you're allowing your body to create it naturally, it's naturally going to look more like well, right. it's natural because it is, right? Well, it is, right? So this is collagen induction therapy. Think of it as if when you go to the gym, do that last rep, you get that little bit of a burn. It's somewhat of an injury, if you will, which will initiate our body's healing response. We build muscle fibers through that injury or through healing, new muscle fibers, tone, tighten, build, younger, healthier. Skin is our largest organ. People forget that all the time. So this actually helps our body create new collagen like the gym for your skin. So we're building new collagen, our skin's behaving younger. Um, we would commonly do a series of treatments, you know, four to six treatments, depending on our goals and our starting point with maintenance being anywhere from two to four times a year. So just like the gym, if you're starting a brand new routine, maybe a diet, you know, an overall healthy program, maybe you'll go four or five days a week. But once you've reached your goal, you can maintain, you can go two or three times a week. You can have a cheat day if you're dieting, as long as you stay consistent with that maintenance we really do retain the great results. So yes, it's, it's natural. Collagen is naturally the youth in our skin and that's what we're working toward. And yes, it goes right along with the trends that we're seeing, natural, healthy looking, everyone wants to be healthy. Over the past few years, what have we seen? You know, health, I mean, for those who, you know, not that I think any of us ever have forgotten, but for those who, you know, weren't really concentrating on that, health is everything that's what we need. We want healthy skin, we want um, a healthy lifestyle, and that's what's really going to serve us as we age. Absolutely, it's a, certainly a great, great point uh, post COVID where we're all hyper alert to our health. Yeah. You know, this is just another part and a very big part, obviously, of your entire being. So, um, obviously, those are some top beauty treatments, and you know, these are beyond beauty treatments; these are really health treatments. But what are some of the top beauty treatments that you're seeing now? So top beauty treatments, you know, again, is, is skincare. I'm a skincare girl. So we're seeing a ton of BBL with Moxie. We're seeing for hydration masks that we're doing. We're seeing um, uh, lots of sunscreen. We're recommending lots of sunscreen. And I'm really seeing those, those, the people that are coming in now with that really old aged sun, you know, sunspotted face and body, they're wanting to reverse that. So I think we're trending away from, from that. And the top procedures, again, very natural lip enhancement, a natural eyebrow, um, healthy, younger looking skin. I think we're really going back toward, again, smaller breast implants, um, you know, more minimally invasive procedures, you know, liposculpting, right? You know, we're seeing that. Um, again, all headed toward natural. Fantastic. So with the many people that you see, what are some of those chief complaints that you see from clients in regarding their skin? You mentioned this sun damage. What are some of the other things and, and what do you typically do to, to address those issues? So I think the most hated skin condition, and I say that because clients come in with the dreaded melasma, um, for those who have melasma or, you know, think they may have melasma. It's what very, yeah. What is that? Very different than sun damage. It is commonly um, a hormonal condition. They used to call it the pregnancy mask, you know, it shows my age back when. Um, I, remember, I remember. So it would pop up a lot, you know, hormonal. But instead of looking like sunspots, it's, it looks, depending on what layer of the skin it's in, blotchy. I've seen people with what looks like a, a complete shading on the side of their face or in a certain area with sunspots on top of it. Um, I've seen people that their skin almost looked purple, 
in Aries, not, not to be confused with port wine birthmark. That's very different. It's vascular, um, hormonal, really dark, anywhere from really dark to lighter Brown, um, large splotches, um, areas on the skin or body, um, which is exacerbated by heat, sun exposure. Um, you know, again, to my point, one of the reasons we're so excited about the new modalities we're using Moxie. Um, has given us the ability to safely treat and effectively treat epidermal melasma because, again, melasma is exacerbated by heat. That could mean, um, you know, having a day on the beach with a hat, with sunscreen, but the heat, the reflection from the sand, from the water, people get this dark. It gets much darker. And no matter how they cover it, and sometimes I even look at them and say, you know, it doesn't look as bad as you think it does. It really doesn't. And I say that because I mean it, not because I'm trying to make them feel better. It is the most hated condition. So having um, this low level energy um, laser modality like Moxie, we're getting phenomenal results in treating melasma. So that is, I think, one of the biggest skin concerns we're seeing, probably because people are kind of searching up and learning about this technology and they're seeing us as a leading provider. So we're seeing a lot more melasma. We're seeing a lot more uh, clients coming in asking, you know, for us to help them treat it and we're getting fabulous results. So that's one of the chief complaints, um, um, uh, outside of, you know, skin laxity, that's always, you know, my age group in the fifties, that's always a big one. Um, rosacea. So you mean you skin laxity, you mean like the tightness of the skin oh, so you're referring to like, <laughs> if you go like this, <laughs> I'm like, you couldn't be talking well, about this, could you? Well, so skin tight, um, and so there are a number of, of um, laser light devices that offer skin. And again, it really is about the injury and initiating the body's healing response that creates the result. So it's not, again, I make reference to the gym. It's not necessarily the dumbbell or the kettlebell or the machine that you use. It's effectively doing the exercise to create that injury or you know, so to speak, injury to initiate your body's healing response. Same for the skin. So um, we do a lot of something called skin tight okay. that um, infrared light energy to um, pass through all five layers of epidermis, go into the dermal layer and create collagenesis or soft tissue coagulation. So with a series of treatments and no downtime, we're getting a nice lift lower face and neck. We can do it on the abdomen. Um, but again, from the side of, you know, beauty consulting, um, you really need to choose your client carefully and make sure they understand because skin tightening is great for, I think that window of time before we're ready for a more invasive procedure, right? So there's that window when we start looking in the mirror and I say this not only as a practitioner, but as a woman who, you know, I've, I've seen it, I, I have felt it myself where you look in the mirror, you go like this, oh, I want it to be like this, but you're not ready for a facelift, right? You're not ready for a surgical procedure, but you're ready for something. So I'm ready. Right. So, and that's very true, right? We all want to look young and healthy and younger. And so skin tight is a really, really good option for the right candidate, which would be someone who does not have a ton of excess tissue, someone who is not really looking to deal with the musculature underneath the skin, but actually the skin that's just starting to come down a little bit of turkey neck, a little bit of maybe, um, crepey skin, you know, kind of here skin tight's perfect for that. We combine it with forever young BBL, which is the study we spoke about the Stanford study, which treats the first five layers of epidermis, creating brighter, firmer, more clear skin, um, at a surface level, and then we combine it, we stack it with skin tight, which goes right through the epidermis, lifts, tones, gives us a little sharper jawline, helps jawline, excuse me, helps us to restore some of that tightness that we had five or six years ago, not 10 or 15 years ago. Then we're looking gold standard surgical procedure, if that makes sense. What's great is that I love that you've been in this industry for so many years, because I think you know, it gives you a perspective of, you know, what has been there, what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, I feel, I, I, I know I get nervous. I'm sure many people do. It's your face. What am I doing to my face? So you want to make sure that you're working with someone like you who has the background of long-term 
understanding, you know, has the relationships with these cutting edge companies that, that are backed by science. You know, these are things I think that are very important when you're deciding who you're going to go to, because it's yes, what are you going to do? And, you know, maybe anyone could open up a storefront. It's like, you know, we saw this huge thing with Botox. It's like everyone and their brother was doing Botox, but it's you want to go to people who know what they're talking about and understand the science behind it. And that's something that speaking to you, I know it gives me a lot of confidence to go ahead and do something like this. Cause it, you know, look, it is your skin. You, you shouldn't just go to anybody. Um, you shouldn't go to anybody. And I, I think that part of the problem, um, you know, on the negative side of, of this industry is there are so many devices and there's so much information and there's so much wrong information. And there are so many people that are um, practicing aesthetics and offering services. And, you know, look, we're, going to offer our clients what we have in our wheelhouse to offer them, which is not necessarily always the best thing for that person, right? Mm -hmm. So it becomes very confusing. Any, anytime you open up, you know, um, any publication, any, any social media app, if you search up one thing, you're hit with a million things for a million, um, a million different laser companies and practitioners. And so how do you know? So I think it really is important to, do the research on the technology, do the research on the practitioner. Um, are they licensed? Have they done preceptorships under, you know, the right people? How long have they had this equipment? Now, again, that's a double-edged sword because, you know, there are great practitioners buying great equipment and there's a starting point, right? You know, for everyone. Um, that being said, it's great to know that the people treating you have had this technology for a while or really experienced with it, um, that the technology has been around for a long time, right? So when we talk about lasers, there are so many new things popping up. And then six months later, you'll see something, oh, this person was hurt or there's a lawsuit for this. And now, oh my goodness, you know, did I do that? Why did I do that? So it's very important to do your research. And if you take the time to do, to look at the background, on people and technology, it is there. It is there. Fantastic. And even asking these questions, I mean, the way you answer them shows your experience. So it's like, even if you're not someone who knows how to research online and just asking these kind of questions, you really get to know what they know. So, so let me, you know, we all want to want this beautiful young looking skin. Walk us through what you would recommend. Let's say I came to your office to meet with you. What would be the process of, you know, your, the way you would handle, you know, helping me get to that, that goal? So the first thing we do when someone contacts us, I ask them to email us photos of their skin without any makeup. Um, we blow those photos up on the computer. It gives us the ability really with this again, with, uh, I know everyone's, ew, I don't want <laughs> like, yikes. <laughs> but, uh, perfections. Don't send me a pretty picture with lots of makeup on because then I can't help you. So you need to be a partner in the solution, right? Just like when you start a diet program, an exercise program, you can't go to the gym six days a week and leave any cookies, you know, not, not if you want to reach your goal. So that goes for skincare, sunscreen, that goes for, so submit photos to us. Let me look at your skin. Let's have a conversation virtually like you and I. So it's not taking a whole lot of time from the perspective client. And I am very honest about what I feel is realistic for the person. You know, what, what, what is it? What's your goal? Where do you, where, where have you been? What have you done? And if that lines up and I think that I can truly help you with your goals, we make an appointment, you come in, you meet with myself or one of my estheticians, uh, Sarah and Brianna both have done the pre preceptorships um, that I have. Uh, super experienced. And we decide if it is going to be a series protocol of, you know, four treatments, six treatments, um, typically spaced four to six weeks apart. And, um, you know, and it's, an, and, and it's important to know that the client is going to be on board with their goal, with helping us achieve the goal. So that's pretty much what a consult looks like. It starts with photos. It starts with a conversation then we go to the next step and decide on a treatment plan, mm -hmm. um, depending on age, depending on goals. Right. So it's very important. It's very individualized because nobody, no two people's skin are exactly the same. So you really 
take the time to analyze what that client needs and make a recommendation based on that and their goals. We absolutely do. I've had two twin sisters, and this is a real, a, a real story, that came in for the same treatment, same concerns, but responded differently. Um, and it has to do with lifestyle. It has to do with sun exposure. It has to do with, when I say apply sunscreen every day, and I know we all hear this and, you know, some listen and some don't. And I've had girls come in to twin sisters and say, oh no, we haven't been in the sun. We're, we're, we're applying SPF 50 every day, but are you reapplying it every hour if you're out in the sun? You can see who is and who isn't, you know? So don't lie to your esthetician. I think that's good. <laughs> They might not tell you that they're lying, that you're lying, but they know. Uh-huh. <laughs> so let, let's talk a little bit about permanent. Well, let me ask you the other thing. Where are your offices located? So we are located in Woodbury, um, Nassau County. We um, share space in the dermatology office of Dr. Stephen Greenberg, Greenberg Cosmetic Surgery. Um, I think most of the people in this area certainly do um, know of him. And um, so we're in Nassau County, and we also have an office in Southampton with Dr. Greenberg. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now you've been on the forefront of permanent makeup long before microbleeding hit the industry. So what would be some of your recommendations? I think, you know, one of the big areas um, of this is about people wanting to enhance their brows. What are your recommendations for that? Oh, um, (laughs) be realistic. I mean, be realistic. So again, yes, when I started out in 1995, we were seeing people that had Uh, gone through health issues, whether it was chemotherapy and they never regrew their brows, alopecia, um, you know, autoimmune disorders, they had lost their brows. Um, We were seeing people who had uh, cleft lip repair and they had scarring on their lips. So um, we were trained and trained people to do this in a very natural manner using anatomical landmarks right? So what does that mean? It means if someone presents with absolutely no eyebrows, you need to know where they belong because two millimeters in the wrong direction will make someone look funny for years to come. So when I started out, that's, you know, what we did. That's what we were trained to do. That's what we saw. We saw areola repigmentation post mastectomy. It was really approached from more of a medical, you know, standpoint in house with physicians. Over the past few years, we saw microblading uh, hit the industry like a storm. Yeah. And along with that came the brows of Instagram, the trends, those big, heavy, dark brows, even on small girls with light hair. Um, I think that people weren't careful. And I say this to the audience because it's still out there. Anyone that's doing microblading, I would ask them, do you work with a digital machine? How long are you doing this? Um are you familiar with color theory? Because a big problem with permanent makeup, and I don't mean to just, it's a great procedure. We do a ton of it. And there are great practitioners, not only me, there are great practitioners doing this. Um, but there are also people that are taking a one or two day course and out there tattooing someone's face. So microblading is a tattoo. It is a tattoo. It's just done with a blade, kind of like a jailhouse tattoo. Okay. They're incising the skin and rubbing an ink. Anytime you implant pigment under the skin, you need to know color theory because if the person has a red undertone or rosacea, so to speak, that's a red tone. And you use, oh, so, well, this nice warm brown, I do this to shake up the bottle of color. This nice warm brown, it looks goes with the hair. You have warm skin tone. Great, let's do that. When you re-epithelialize or heal with that red skin tone on top of that reddish pigment, we have eggplant purple or peach eyebrows. Why? Because when you take like transparent paper, they paint, you know, red paint on the wall or, you know, brown paint on the wall and you lay transparent paper on top of it, the color changes. When your skin, five layers of epidermis heals, the color takes on the tone of the skin. And if the base is red, now that person is living with a purple or red or peach eyebrow for years. So color theory, do you know color theory? Um, you know, so things like that is super important. Um, you know, be realistic. If you came in with a picture of Kim Kardashian, um, and we get that all the time, and you're a little five foot tall girl with, you know, very light eyebrows, and you've never worn a lot of pencil, 
don't tattoo it until you've gone home and bought a, bought a black pencil and done it every day for two weeks. Right. Tell me those brows, you know, so that's a big thing, you know. That's really smart. When you're going to be tattooing, you don't want to just follow the trends. You want to know what is going to look good on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Long term. Right. Awesome. Now that we're seeing these more natural um, trends, we're also seeing the clients that had those big, dark brows. And they say, well, what can we do? Because they think it's makeup because it's being positioned as a semi-permanent procedure. Microblading is a tattoo. It does wear down. It does need retouches. But in certain cases, it lasts for years and years and years. Right. So, well, yeah. No, that's really good advice to, to experience what it's going to look like and make sure. I mean, this thing about color theory, my goodness. That is is critical to ask. Doctors don't know. I, I've had, I'm contacted all the time about doing preceptorships and, you know, can they, can they come and observe and can they learn? And they need the basis. They need the basis. And, um, and I can certainly rec- make recommendations as to um, where they can go for that training. And um, anyone um, who does have questions, by the way, uh, my Instagram, Permanent Touch Cosmetics, um, through this webinar, you can contact me. I'm happy to offer advice, even if you're not coming to me for a particular procedure. It's my I love this industry. I'm passionate about it. I, I, I'm happy to help in any way I can. So we are at Permanent Touch Cosmetics um, on Instagram, um, permanenttouchcosmetics.com um, website, Sharon Grasso, if you Google me, I mean, lots of stuff. <laughs> you can, you can read that. I actually put your link right in the, um, right in the chat so people can pick it up and grab it and be able to reach out to you and learn more. And, you know, I certainly encourage people at least to set up a consultation because if you're here, you're interested in greater looking skin. So, you know, certainly to find out about that. So, you know, if there was one piece of advice that you could give to your younger self (laughs) in regards to skincare, anti-aging to your, to your daughter, you know, what would it be? It would be use sunscreen. It sounds so cliche and everybody says that I have two daughters and I say it to them and they listen, they're kind of listening. Um, (laughs) So so I will say this, say this to anyone watching or anyone that you know, if you go online and you Google truck driver sun damage, there's this image that comes up. I wish we could bring it up now. It is in every Google it. And, and training. Can, do you have access? Do you have the ability to bring okay, it up? I'm going to see if I can pull it up. Okay. It's a picture of uh, an older gentleman who was a truck driver his whole life. One side of his face looks like it's melted. The side that he was driving, you know, all those years. Do you see it? Yeah, I'm going to pull it. Let me pull it up. Let me see if I can share it with everybody. It's powerful. So when I say it to people and I show them that, they say, that's just from driving without sunscreen? Yeah. When people come in, um, we see women as well as men, of course. There it is. So look here. Let's see if I can show that bigger. Whoops. No, it's taking me on a journey. Let me go back to this. 28 years of sun damage. Yes. Look at one side versus the other. That's insane. Yes. Yes. And so that's real. And that's in a truck behind glass. Well, it doesn't matter. The sun's coming Last, just no. like it's again, educate yourself and, and ask the questions, ask the questions, message me. I want to help. I love this industry. I, I will share what I have learned over all these years. When people come in with sun damage on one side of their face or melasma worse on one side of their face, we see hairstylists all the time that come in with melasma. Why? They use the blow dryer all day long and that heat is hitting them in the face. Who would think about that? It's wow. heat. Yes. Wow. Interesting. Yes. So, okay. So we're going to wear sunscreen, but even if we're wearing sunscreen, like how does summer affect treatments? Like, do you recommend that people wait until after the summer for certain things? Like what, what, how, how will, so, you know, if I'm going to get my journey started, how does it affect uh, treatments? I'm going to say to you and all of our viewers, the same thing I say to my consults every day. If you are ready to start this journey with me or someone like me, it means you're going to invest in your skin, okay? So that means you can treat year-round because you're going to wear sunscreen. You're going to wear a hat. So take um, a modality like Moxie. It is safe year-round 
on all skin types. It is attracted to, so a laser is attracted to water, not pigment. Okay. So mm -hmm. it is year round on all skin types. We're not breaking the skin. So we do not run the risk of infection. You can put makeup and sunscreen over it immediately. We don't have that downtime and healing time that we see with the blade of technology. So we can certainly moxie year round. We can skin tight. Skin tightening is a completely colorblind wavelength. We can do that all year round. Broadband light or BBL photo rejuvenation is attracted to pigment. That's how it removes that, those sunspots. But there are settings that we can use. And if you're wearing sunscreen, you're fine. You're fine. You know, it, it really, it really is the client partnership with the practitioner to invest together in the results that we want. Mm -hmm. Sunscreen, bring it with you. We have, we don't sell a whole bunch of products and I don't push a whole bunch of products. We do sell um, a sunscreen that is a clear zinc. It's made for sensitive skin, post-treatment skin. I'm wearing it now. Um, it's not heavy like a, you know, foundation, um, throw that on every day. If you're going to the beach, reapply it every hour. Um, you know, and you can continue to treat and keep your skin clean. The, the sweating, some of us are still needing to wear masks in certain professions for sure. We're wearing masks when we treat clients, you know, now, um, wash your face, keep your skin clean, take that makeup off at the end of the day, wear your sunscreen and you can treat year round. Great. Well, your skin looks amazing. So if that's any indication, <laughs> sign me up. Amazing. Right. I'm 86. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm you joking. Recommend, Cause look, your coloring is so beautiful. Do you recommend people using like tanners and things like that so that they can get some kind of sun kissed look without the damage of the sun? Cause I think a lot of people are addicted to that look. Yeah. And so it's hard for them to give up on the sun. What do you recommend? So I'm going to tell you two things because that segues me into something else I want to share. Um, so yes, of course, self tanners are great depending on the person. If you have large pores or the appearance of large pores, some of that self tanner can kind of get in there and, and, and then people are, they have that rebound where it looks like they have blackheads and then they start picking. Right. Uh -huh. So, you know um, yes, you can use a self tanner spray tans are great, but if you're coming in for a broadband light photo facial, it is attracted to pigment. So if you come to my office and you have a freshly, you know, beautiful, dark, glowing spray tan, we cannot treat you because the machine does not know the difference between the spray tan, you know, and the, the right. right, and, and the chromophore. Um, the other thing that I was going to say, very important for acneic skin. And I say this to the younger, my younger self, my girls, my, my children, um, anyone who has, you know, a little bit of acne and they say, well, I have an event coming up and I'm going to lay in the sun because when you lay in the sun, the skin appears to clear up. You get that little burn, that little tan. And for a short period of time, it may appear to look better. However, our body recognizes a sunburn or tan as an injury. Mm -hmm. So your body's going to kick up more oils to heal it. Okay. And so the surface is dry. And underneath, we're making more oils, and we can very frequently get an awful rebound breakout. We see people that lay in the sun, and they get that little bit of even, listen, there are girls that put on SPF 20, it doesn't do a lot, and then they lay out with the, and they get tan. Um, you know, it's not great. I'd rather you wear something than nothing. That being said, if you're acne, do not do it. Because even if it looks good for a little while, um, the rebound breakout can be brutal and hard to treat because your body's going to try and heal that injury, which is your tan. And then you'll get this cystic, you know, these pustules, this, these um, uh, pimples that don't have a head. The skin is dry. The oils are trying to break through. And then people pick, don't ever pick. It leads to scarring. We see it all the time. We do something called Forever Clear BBL, Forever Clear Broadband Light. It uses a blue light. Um, that kills the active bacteria, the active acne bacteria. And then we will do, um, again, broadband light gives us a, a multitude of different wavelengths. So we use something to pull the red out to calm down the inflammation. So we treat this, we do this all the time. And we know when someone has been in the sun and they have that rebound breakout and we see it a lot in younger, you know, younger adults. Do you work with teenagers and, 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 you know, people in their twenties that, that tend to have more breakouts? 
We do. As a matter of fact, my esthetician, Sarah, she's fantastic. Um, on my Instagram, again, the handle is Permanent Touch Cosmetics. There is a picture and I'll repost it so it comes up right at the, uh, the front um, or at the top. She, it, when you see how she transformed her skin, um, she started in her early 20s and she had, you know, really bad breakouts. Her skin at this point using this technology, um, people stop her when they come in and they say, um, when she's not wearing a mask, oh my goodness, or they ask to see her skin, the transformation is unbelievable. So it's not just that we do this and we treat, um, we do it to ourselves. You know, we believe in the technology, we believe in the treatments. So um, yeah, we do treat a lot of, uh, a lot of younger, younger adults. Amazing. I'm excited. I don't know. I'm sure everyone is excited, but I feel like there's a new opportunity to kind of you know, make my skin look beautiful and natural. Cause I think that's also another concern that as we're getting older, you know, we don't want to look like we're doing so much work. We mm -hmm. still want to look natural and we want to age, you know, I don't mind aging. And I think a lot of people feel that way. We just want to age more beautifully. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's exciting that you have ways to be able to do that. So we do. And um, again, the gold standard is still surgical. When you get to a certain age, there is a point where, you know, that is indicated. Um, it's not for everyone. Some people have health issues that um, stop them from being able to have a surgical procedure. But even for those that can move forward and book that gold standard facelift, having the collagen pumping, stimulated, having your skin glow will enhance the, they, these treatments work really well with a surgical procedure. One, when you have more collagen in your skin, you heal more quickly, you heal better. Mm -hmm. Um, two, when you make the skin more vibrant, younger, more porcelain, like it lends itself to a more realistic appearance after you've had that facelift, right? Mm -hmm. And you see women that have had that pulled back, you know, in their skin and you see the striations and it's dry and it's damaged. It does. It's not your best aesthetic that people are investing, you know, time, money, um, downtime in a surgical procedure let's do it right. Let's do it together. Let's make it all work. And skin is a big part of that. Wow. That's a really good point. So do you recommend that people start these kind of treatments? How far prior to surgery would you recommend? Again, depending on the individual, I certainly recommend at least three of these treatments um, within a three month period before your surgery. And again, picking back up um, as soon as the doctor clears you. So Again, I'm not an MD, so I would not make that call myself, but I will tell you, we treat um, patients post-operatively, you know, as soon as three weeks after, because these treatments help with bruising. These treatments help with swelling, collagen, mm -hmm. heal. So I would say those, that three months pre-operatively, removing sun damage, clearing up melasma, getting the skin um, healthier, more glowing, the, the pores to appear smaller, that prepares us for the sur as skin's ready. So after the surgery, we're not worried about the brown spots. We've already cleared that up. And then post-operatively, we help the healing. We can even work on scarring. Um, again, you know, with a great surgeon, I've seen a lot of Dr. Greenberg's work as well as being his patient. Um, scarring is great. There really is none. However, People do come to me from, you know, plastic surgeons, other doctors, and I've seen scarring from facelifts. We can work on that. Tummy tuck scarring, breast lift scarring. We can work on that. Okay. With like oh, yeah. That. Amazing. I mean, I could seriously, I could talk to you all day. I could ask you a million questions, but I need to be respectful. You have all your clients that, that you need to see, but I am Happy. so grateful for all this information. I did share in the chat again, it's permanenttouchcosmetics.com. It's in the, in the chat. I'll also, everyone's going to get a thank you email tomorrow and I will have the website there as well. Also on social media at permanent touch cosmetics. Um, you can also Google Sharon's name, Sharon Grasso. I put that name, put her name and spelling in the chat as well. So you can reach out there, but certainly I, I, I recommend to everyone reach out, have a consultation, see where your skin is, see what the recommendations are to go next. And you've really given us jewels of advice so that we know that we're dealing the right questions to ask and to feel confident that, you know, taking care of our skin is, is a big part of our overall health. It really is. It really is. So thank, well, thank you so much.
Yes. Yes. And thank you to our attendees. We're so, so grateful that you spent some of your time with us here today. This has been recorded and I will have the link available so you can watch it again and you can share it with all of your family and friends and girlfriends and go right ahead and do so. And uh, when you learn something new, you can't wait to tell people about it. So I know I'm going to go telling a lot of people about it. So then thank you, Sharon. Thank you to our attendees. And we'll look forward to seeing you on a future webinar.